Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to make a connection between area and integration. And so we're going to start with drawing this, a little f of x here. So let's just say I've got this curve here. And I'm interested in finding the area between, I'm going to call this A and this B. So I want to find this area in here. And we did uh, yesterday, or in class, we did a left-hand Riemann sum, right-hand Riemann sum. We also did a midpoint. And today we're going to say that it doesn't really matter where you draw it. It doesn't matter if you have a, an interval. It doesn't matter if you go left, right, midpoint. or You can pick any place in between there. So I'm going to do a, uh, an interval. You got, so let's, we're going to break this up into pieces. So I'll, I'll have a few intervals here. So we're going to break it up into however many pieces we want to. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to call this interval right here the kth interval. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, k, whatever. So k is going to range from 1 to however many rectangles we put in here. So I'm going to call this the k sub interval. And I'm going to pick a point anywhere in here. I'm just going to call do that one right there. So any point in this interval, I'm going to go inside this kth interval, and I'm going to go up to the curve from there. And I'm going to draw a rectangle right there with the height of whatever that height is off of the graph. So this is going to be my rectangle. And so I've got this c sub k. This is any point in the kth subinterval. So c sub k, this, I've, I've picked an x inside here, and we've drawn a rectangle with that specific height. Now the area of this rectangle is going to be width times height, but I'm going to do height times width first. So the height is the function value at this specific point C in the case of interval. And the width is, I'm going to call it delta x. This is the change in x. However, however wide this is, that's going to be delta x. That's going to be the area of that rectangle. And if I did this, all throughout here, the sum of all these rectangles would be a summation. And I would be adding up, I'm going to let k go from 1 to n, however many rectangles we have. I'm going to add up all of these heights times my widths. So that would be the sum of all of those rectangles. And this sum is called a Riemann sum. We, we need it to be you've got to have a product, a height and a width. So a Riemann sum must have a product of a height and a width. This is my height and this is my width. Now how could I make it the exact area under the curve? What would be necessary for me to do to make this exact and not an estimation? You've got really two choices. You can let delta x go to zero or you can let the number of rectangles go to infinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the number of rectangles go to infinity. So the exact area would be the limit. Oh, looky there. It's a limit. We started the year with those. As n approaches infinity of all of my summations, I'm going to let k go from 1 to n of f of c sub k times delta x sub k. And so this is an infinite summation, and that's how we get the exact area under the curve. And we are going to define that, the definition of a definite integral, to be exactly that, an infinite Riemann sum. And I need you to change these, this to n on your notes here, because these should both be n's. Um, anyway, so that's my definition. And my area bounded by the curve and the x-axis is going to be defined as the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And that's how integration and area are, are related. So let's head over here and take a look at some properties of definite integrals. First of all, your integral from a to a, if you have no width, if you're, if you're not moving along the x-axis at all, then this integral from a to a is going to be zero. If you have no width, then there's no way you can have any area. It doesn't matter how tall it is, that's going to be zero. Your integral from b to a of f of x dx can also equal the opposite or the negation of the integral from a to b. If you are ever interested, and we will be interested, if you're ever interested in switching a and b, then all you have to do is put a negative out here, and that will be the same thing. If you have a constant inside, you can pull the constant outside of the integral. So k times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. You can do that if you want. Um, this says if c lies between a and b, that's not really even necessary. But 
for today, they're, it's, C is going to be in between A and B. You can break an integral up into pieces. You can go the integral from A to C of f of x dx plus the integral from B to C. I meant to say, sorry, let's change that C to B, yes, of f of x dx. So you can break it up into pieces. Notice we're, we're eventually going from A to B, but we broke it up in the two separate pieces. And if you're integrating across a sum, you just integrate the first one, integral from a to b of f of x dx, plus the integral from a to b of g of x dx. And I'm not going to write it, well, why not? And if you're integrating across a difference, that's going to be the integral from a to b of f minus the integral from a to b of g. I want you to note please, and we've already talked about this when we were doing some integrals, there's no product rule for integration and there's no quotient rule for integration. Um, so you, I'm sure that I mean, it, it would be nice if that was true, but it's not. So we cannot do this. You can't separate a product or a quotient and just integrate the top and bottom or integrate each one separately. So please do not do that. All right, so now we're just defining an integral as area. So we're going to see if we can do this by using our geometric area formulas. So I want to find the integral from 1 to 6 of 4. Now what does the graph of 4 look like? It's a horizontal line up here at 4. So here is a graph of y equals 4. And I want to find the area from 1 out here to 6. So let's see what that would look like. Well that would just make one big rectangle and that would be a pretty simple thing to do. My height is 4, my width is 5, so this area is 20. But you notice that you don't actually have to draw this. If you ever have the integral from a to b of a constant, just take this constant times the width of your interval. All right, let's draw um, the integral from 1 to 3 of x plus 2. x plus 2 is a straight line with a y-intercept of 2, and we want to go from 1 out to 3. Let's take a look at this area. What kind of shape is this? Well, this is a trapezoid. I missed there, sorry. Um, and this is a trapezoid. This height would be 3 and this height would be 5. And so the way you find the area of a trapezoid is you average the bases. I'm, so I realize this is sort of sideways, but my bases are the 3 and the 5. We're going to average those two things. So 3 plus 5 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. And we're going to multiply that times the width. So this is your formula for the area of a trapezoid. Average your bases and then multiply that times your width. And so 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is this area is 8. Um, this sort of looks weird, the square root of 4 minus x squared, but it's not really. This comes from x squared plus y squared equals 4. And this is a, the solution to this. And this was a circle with a radius of 2. And so what we have here, this is the actually upper hemisphere, or the top part of the circle, from negative 2 to 2. So this is just a little circle thingy. I missed again. I have a bad hard time with it. This is harder than you think it is. Um, so this has a height of 2, and that's what that graph looks like. And so the area of a circle, of course, is just pi r squared. So my area would be 4 pi, but then half of that, because this is just a semicircle. So this area would be 2 pi. Now, if you ever have any area below the x-axis, these the heights are going to be negative. So anything below the x-axis is going to count as a negative area. So let's see, this is a triangle with a height of negative 2 and a width of 1, 2, 3. So this is negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Of course we do base times height divided by 2 to get the area of a triangle. And we'll do it again over here. This one, the second triangle however, that's going to be a positive because it's above the x-axis. So I have a height of 1, 2, 3, and I have a base of 1, 2, 3, so that's 9 halves. And then this last triangle, again, is below the x-axis, so it's going to be a negative area. So I have a height of negative 1 and a base of 2, so this is minus 1. So this would be negative 4 plus 9 halves. That's going to be the area. Um, we're going to call this the net signed area under the curve. All right, 
Um, just some properties of integral practice before we're done. The integral from 0 to 3 of f is 4, and the integral from 3 to 7 of f is negative 1. So we want to find the integral from 0 to 7. So this is like when we broke it up into pieces earlier at the top of the page. I can do the integral from 0 to 4 plus the integral from, sorry, from 0 to 3 plus the integral from 3 to 7. And that's going to be my integral. It's pretty easy. That's just 3. Um, of course, this 2 can come out in front for part b. 2 times the integral from 3 to 7 of f. And the integral from 3 to 7 of f is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Not so bad. And just like we said earlier, the integral from 5 to 5, this is a no-width rectangle. So if we have no width, there's no way to have area. And so that's just 0. So I will see you guys tomorrow.